Into the shed, if you don't mind, sir. What are we here, then? That's smart looking, eh? Five door, all steel hatchback, styled by Bertoni of Turin, with engineering assistance from Porsche. If I want your opinion, I'll ask. OK. Monocoque construction, bolt-on wings. I know what I'm looking for, and it isn't you being clever. Right? What exactly are we looking for, sir? You just look. I'll do the thinking. Just the one? Yep, for everything. Ah, interesting. Four-cylinder, water-cooled engine, transversely mounted, front wheel drive. We're looking at the boot at the moment, thank you. Oh. Lights on the tailgate, eh? Oh. Lots more room for loading. Does the shelf come out? Of course. What's in here? Eight and a half cubic feet of storage space. Oh, I mean here. Aha. Oh, what's this? What? Thoughtful. Thoughtful. Oops. Uh, is this uh, meant to come off? Yep, that's a rechargeable torch as well as an automatic light. Huh? Just as well. Let's have a look under the bonnet, then. Heated rear windscreen with wash wipe. They know a thing or two about bad weather over there. Surprisingly roomy. Easy access. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. 1289cc, 61.7 brake horse at 5,000 RPM, leaded or unleaded. Pierberg twin choke downdraft carburetor, complies with lower emission requirements. Water heated inlet manifold so you got better fuel vaporisation. Excellent cold running. Go on, go on. Large capacity fuel pump and return flow fuel system means a greatly reduced possibility of inline vaporisation. Oh, and of course the most obvious change is the light hour cylinder box and cylinder head. Much improved weight distribution. Mm. But Tony... The cylinder head is now an eight-port design which we've developed from our own very successful rally engine. The torque is developed over a wider engine speed range than previously, giving a flexible and tolerant engine performance with less need for frequent gear changing. Useful when towing. And in heavy traffic. Traffic? What traffic? And with the high energy electronic ignition system, you've got no mechanical contact breakers. That gives you a very constant ignition. And cold starting? <laughs> no problem. Wonderfully smooth five speed box. Torsion damp dry plate clutch, I suppose. Having a little sleep. I thought we were going to be all night. We haven't got all night, and if I don't get through. But you still haven't told me 
what it is exactly that we are supposed to be looking for. You'll know when we find it, so get to it! Oh, no. Get something up on the ramp! Exhaust zinc treated inside and out. Standard rack and pinion steering. 11.3 metre turning circle. That's 33 feet to you. Very light, too. You'll be telling me next that the suspension is a wishbone type, I suppose? No. McPherson strut, actually. At the back, you've got coil springs, telescopic dampers with a torsion crossbeam. Developed in conjunction with Porsche for balance and natural handling. A very comfortable ride. That's enough of that. Take it down. We'll have that front wheel off, if we may. You'll find all you need in the boot. And we'll have the driver's side door panel off as well. If you can stay awake that long. 47 litre capacity, that's over 10 gallons, with expansion tank and anti-spill valves, protected by crumple zones. Fold down your back seat, and you've got 19 and a half cubic feet of space to play with. Quick and cavernous. What's that? Passenger compartment ventilation. And here, you've got your roof rack mounting points. Handy for parking in tight corners. So you've got the wipers in the correct position for right-hand drive. That's unusual for an import. Deep laminated windscreen too. Heater intakes. Oh, British made light alloy wheels. Not standard, are they? Yep, and it's a servo assisted diagonally split dual circuit braking system. Girling designed single pot sliding caliper discs at the front, drums at the rear. Not a speck of asbestos anywhere. <laughs> Fluid warning light on the dash, obviously. And these will stop your bonnet coming up through your windscreen if you do happen to hit something. And here you've got your full depth wrap round bumper with fixing points for fog lamps. Single unit halogen headlamps adjustable from inside for load compensation. Very important, often neglected. Got that door panel off yet? There's nothing here, sir. Ah, but there is. Side impact protection bars incorporated into the structure of the door. <laughs> I believe you've got a, a rather good anti-corrosion reputation, haven't you? Phosphate bath, electrophoretic coating, plastisol sealant underneath, ICI of course, then primer and top coat on the lock. Yeah, well, that would explain it. I think I've found what I was looking for.
Is the car for me? I'll keep hold of those, if you don't mind. But... But it's just what I was looking for. I'm terribly sorry to disappoint you both, but it's more than my job's worth, you see. I've got to take this car to Steve Ryder for a road test. It was worth a try. When we talk about Skoda, we talk about one of the oldest, established, most respected motor manufacturers around. A company with a proven record of producing practical, economical and very competitively priced motor cars. But they're not unexciting cars by any means, as Skoda's amazing record in world championship rallying over the last 15 years or so would prove. Now, the favourite is in the very best of the Skoda traditions. It's part of a multi-million pound investment by the company, which involves building new production plants uh, equipped with the most advanced computerization and robotization that's around today. The favourite takes its name from one of the most popular Skoda models of the 30s. It's a five-door hatchback with very pleasing lines. In fact, the styling is by Bertoni of Italy with additional engineering contributions by no less than Porsche. Just 12 and a half feet long, but an amazing amount of room inside, and the wide opening doors, both front and rear, give the perfect kind of access to make use of all that space. And at the back, a very wide tailgate, and that combined with this convenient low loading lip means there's a whole range of awkward loads that can be carried especially when that back seat is folded down. So, room inside, room at the back. In fact, a great deal of space in the engine compartment around the transversely mounted 1300cc engine. Once again, ease of access, this time for ease of maintenance. As regards the bodywork, well, that's covered and protected by uh, a proven ICI rust-proofing treatment. The whole of the body shell is immersed in a phosphate bath and then sealed and then dipped, and that's all before the primer and the top coat are applied. Well, that's a guided tour of the outside. Let's take a look at the inside of the car. And once again, the feeling you get is that one of space. Very good head and leg room, both in the front and in the rear. Uh, comfortable seats, adjustable for most sizes of uh, driver or passenger, and those head restraints fitted once again, both front and rear. Very little has been spared in the way of expense on uh, interior trim. Very hard wearing, very attractive carpet. And another impression you get is the all-round visibility. Very few blind spots around this car. Very attractive face here, a large glove compartment, comprehensive, easy to understand controls for heating and ventilation, and in general the dashboard is very concise, giving the driver precisely the kind of information that he wants on the operation and the condition of the car. Fitted as standard, this internally mounted uh, door mirror and the internal mirror itself works in two positions. Laminated windscreen, that's fitted as standard as well, no expense spared. But this is the 136 LX model, so there are a couple of extras, notably the sunroof with its ceramic aerial and the Philips stereo cassette player. Now, let's go for a drive. And another thing I like is the single key operation. It works not only the ignition, but the doors, the tailgate, the petrol cap as well, another feature that I approve of.
pedals are very comfortably spaced and the clutch feels light. It's a very smooth getaway. Five-speed gearbox, which also feels very precise. All the gears are very easy to find. Steering is rack and pinion. That also feels very light. Rather surprisingly light at uh, parking speeds, which is when a front-engine car often starts to feel a little bit heavy. If the weather clamps down, then you've got dual-speed wash wipers in the front and a wash wiper on the tailgate at the back, so you should be able to cope with the worst of that. It's a very smooth-running 1300cc engine, fully equipped to run on unleaded fuel, and it's a, a very nice torque characteristic, which means that you're not constantly changing gear, as you so often seem to be in a smaller engine car. So the overall feel is one of a very sure-footed ride. You're not rolling around on corners, but at the same time the ride isn't so firm that every bump and rut on the road is being transmitted into the passenger compartment. Well, we can bowl along quite happily at the maximum legal speed limit, but when it comes to fuel consumption, well, if we were to do a steady 56 miles an hour, then we'd be getting 50 miles to the gallon, and those figures are official. So there we have it, a five-door hatchback which is spacious, economical, reliable. It's priced at something like a thousand pounds less than similar specification cars on the market. Not only that, but it's got a two-year unlimited mileage warranty. In these days of economic pressures, the Favorit really does make economic sense. And if you were to go along to your local Skoda dealer, I think you get quite a surprise. And the Favorit could well become your family's favorite car.